my god! Oh my god! Today, we will use a scientific perspective to explore the complex truth behind meteorological events. According to the latest news from Japan's Kyoto News website, on February 5th, as a low-pressure system passed along the southern coast, the Kanto Kashinabu area and surrounding areas encountered severe snowstorms, highways were emergency closed, and authorities warned that the transportation network would be severely disrupted. All of Tokyo, Saitama Prefecture and parts of Chiba Prefecture are under a heavy snow warning, including central Tokyo. The Tokai region, including Fu and Shizuoka prefectures, and Fukushima Prefecture in the Tohoku region also experienced heavy snowfall. On Tuesday morning, residents heading to work or school encountered icy conditions on the roads. The Tokyo Fire Department said more than 140 people were taken to hospitals in Tokyo as of Tuesday, after many people slipped and fell due to heavy snowfall in eastern Japan. According to reports, the injured ranged in age from 4 to 92 years old and their injuries were not life-threatening. More than 30 people were injured in neighboring Kanagawa Prefecture, and more than 70 people were slightly injured in Saitama Prefecture. Thank you for liking, leaving comments, subscribing and turning on the little bell, we will update every day. Snowfall in areas such as the North Kanto region is 40 cm, Hakone in Kanagawa Prefecture and Tama in western Tokyo have 30 cm of snowfall, and 8 cm of snowfall are expected in Tokyo's 23 wards. All Nippon Airways and Japan Airlines have cancelled at least 100 flights in total, affecting more than 11,000 people. JR East said the suspension, which included several other lines in the metropolitan area, affected more than 190,000 people in total. East Japan Railway Company has decided to suspend some limited express train services on the Chua Line starting Monday night. Six express trains were stranded at the station for more than 10 hours at night forcing more than 1,600 passengers to spend the night on board. One of them was taken to hospital after feeling unwell. Major highways running through Tokyo and its surrounding areas, including the Tomei Expressway and the Metropolitan Expressway, were partially closed, according to operators. As a precaution, drivers are required by law to use snow tires on snowy roads. As of Monday evening, Mayabashi City in Gunma Prefecture had recorded the highest snowfall of 11 cm, while central Tokyo and Saitama City each received 8 cm. Severe snowstorms occur frequently in Japan, and the reasons behind them are complicated. First of all, most of Japan is located between 30 and 45 degrees north latitude. According to its geographical location, it has a temperate maritime climate, but the area north of Hokkaido is close to the subpolar climate zone. In winter, under the influence of cold air brought by the northeast monsoon, the average temperature north of central Japan is below zero degrees Celsius, and in the areas along the Sea of Japan, it can even reach around minus 10 degrees Celsius. Low temperature can easily lead to water vapor condensation and precipitation, which is an important basic condition for producing snowstorms. Secondly, the intersection of the northeast monsoon and ocean currents can easily cause disturbances. There are obvious air quality differences and temperature contrasts between the westerly belt and the northeast monsoon, prevailing in the western North Pacific, and their intersection is often in the offshore waters of Japan. The intersection of warm and cold air intensifies convection and upward motion, providing dynamic conditions for the occurrence of snowstorms. In addition, 
The warm Kuroshio current and the cold Tsushima current converge in the offshore Japan, and the sea temperature difference reaches more than 10 degrees Celsius, which also enhances convective instability. At the same time, Japan's mountainous terrain is conducive to increased wind and precipitation. Japan is surrounded by sea on three sides, with complex terrain in the central and northern parts, including a series of high mountains such as the Northern Alps. When a blizzard system enters Japan, the mountainous terrain can force the air to move upward, exacerbating the instability within the system. At the same time, the uplift and slope differences of plateaus and mountains will also produce mountain wind effects, which will significantly intensify the increase in wind speed and precipitation. In addition, the weather becomes more severe due to the influence of cyclones and fronts. When winter cyclones or fronts affect Japan, the weather often changes drastically. Some strong winter cyclone centers form in the waters near Japan. The increased wind speed and water vapor transport brought by the cyclone, as well as the interaction with the land, can quickly intensify the snowstorm. Fronts can also cause dramatic temperature changes, produce forced upward motion, and cause increased precipitation. More importantly, climate change is leading to an increase in extreme weather. Research shows that due to the influence of global warming, Japan's warm temperate zone in winter has shifted northward, and the intensity and frequency of extratropical storms have increased, bringing greater uncertainty to Japan's weather. Extreme cold events, extreme cold events, and blizzard disasters have shown a significant growth trend, which is an important manifestation of abnormal climate change. When a blizzard occurs, it is especially important for individuals to take some risk avoidance measures. First of all, we must pay close attention to weather forecasts and judge the accuracy of extreme weather warnings. Whether the forecast of extreme weather such as blizzards is accurate or not directly affects public behavior arrangements. Individuals should promptly pay attention to the Meteorological Department's monitoring data and climate similarity history, judge the accuracy of meteorological warnings, and adopt appropriate and thorough response plans within an effective time window. Excessive worry or carelessness may lead to irrational panic or disaster with serious consequences. Secondly, sufficient daily necessities and spare equipment should be stored indoors. Snowstorms may interrupt power supply, heating, and transportation systems, and may also make it extremely difficult for people to get in and out of the house. Therefore, we must ensure the basic safety and comfort of our living environment before the storm hits. Check the strength of the roof structure and windows and doors, clean up outdoor debris, and store sufficient food and drinking water. Mobile power supplies, fuel, backup generators, etc. for the use of people inside the house. At the same time, it is necessary to scientifically plan and arrange life behaviors and travel routes. When the meteorological department issues a red warning for a snowstorm, individuals must treat it with a scientific and rational attitude, and accordingly arrange travel and shopping plans to avoid irrational panic buying and panic. In extreme weather when traffic is paralyzed, walking will be safer and more efficient. It may not be wise to hoard too many daily necessities. Plan a reasonable life for three to five days so that you can spend it safely. In addition, medical and first aid supplies should be stocked to prevent health and safety risks. People with weak constitutions, such as the elderly and children, are more likely to get sick in severe cold environments without electricity or heating. In addition, blizzards will damage road trees and bury ground obstacles, increasing travel risks. 
Therefore, individuals should stock up on necessary medicines and medical supplies, such as thermometers, antipyretics, band-aids, bandages, etc., and the whole family should have an understanding of cardiopulmonary resuscitation and basic first aid knowledge. Keep the surrounding environment safe and clean to prevent injuries from falls. On the other hand, community and municipal management departments must also take corresponding measures. First of all, Meteorological departments should strengthen early warning and monitoring and predict possible heavy snow conditions and impacts in advance so that relevant departments have enough time to prepare response measures. The city management department should quickly launch a snow prevention plan, establish a headquarters, and coordinate the city's snow prevention forces. We also maintain close contact with various infrastructure departments such as transportation, communications, electricity, and heating, and request them to inspect equipment and facilities to prevent operational failures caused by heavy snow. Secondly, each district is equipped with professional snow-clearing vehicles and personnel to clear snow from main roads and public places. Pay attention to providing key protection to bridges, rooftops, and other places with a lot of snow. At the same time, volunteers are organized to conduct road patrols and clear blockages in a timely manner. Open necessary temporary shelters for homeless people. And prepare emergency food supplies. More importantly, each community must quickly establish a snow prevention team and remind residents of countermeasures through bulletin boards, radio, and the internet. Help residents check the snow pressure on their roofs and clear snow in front of their doors. Distribute anti-slip blankets, salt, and other supplies. Open necessary shelters for residents to take temporary refuge. We also contacted supermarkets, wet markets and other merchants to support them in increasing their stocking capacity and ensuring the supply of daily necessities for residents. It must be mentioned that if heavy snow causes traffic restrictions, the control time must be evaluated based on the weather forecast and announcements made in advance to reduce travel pressure. Set up warning signs correctly on both sides of the main road to avoid traffic jams. Set up temporary traffic diversion points to guide trapped vehicles out of trouble. What is easily overlooked is that roads are particularly icy during and after heavy snowfalls, and all districts must increase efforts to de-ice roads and spread salt to melt them. Distribute calcium chloride to residents to clean their front doors to ensure the safety of pedestrians and vehicles. Going all out to do these preventive work during the blizzard can avoid secondary disasters such as traffic paralysis and lack of people's livelihood in the city to the greatest extent and ensure the normal operation of the city. When a snowstorm occurs, the most direct impact is on traffic. First, snowstorms can seriously affect road transportation. Strong winds cause ice and snow on the roads, making traffic accidents very easy to occur. Trees, telephone poles and other obstacles are blown down, blocking the roads. Secondly, the snowstorm's damage to railway transportation is also very significant. Wind and snow cause ice and snow to accumulate on the rails, making operation difficult. Extreme low temperatures can freeze and crack the rails, heavy snow can collapse rail cables and signaling facilities. These can cause serious delays and accidents. At the same time, air transport is also prone to being paralyzed by snowstorms. Heavy snowstorms seriously affected the takeoff and landing of aircraft, causing flight delays and cancellations. Poor ground transportation affected passenger travel. The snow on the airport runway needs to be cleared, which consumes a lot of manpower and material resources. 
it cannot be ignored that snowstorms will also have a negative impact on port transportation. Huge waves caused by strong winds prevent ships from berthing at the shore, ship equipment freezes, visibility decreases, increasing navigation risks. These will seriously affect transportation efficiency. Therefore, when encountering blizzard weather, the transportation department is the key to the normal operation of the city and should take timely response measures. The first is to strengthen road traffic supervision and command, establish a road traffic emergency command center, and be on duty 24 hours a day to grasp road traffic conditions in real time. Communicate information with public security, meteorological, and other departments. Track real-time traffic flow and speed on roads, road ice and snow conditions, number of traffic accidents, etc., and draw traffic situation maps. If necessary, implement traffic control or closure, arrange traffic diversion, organize temporary parking spots for large vehicles, and guide the transfer of trapped vehicles. Secondly, we must devote all our efforts to clearing snow and ice on the roads. Refine the snow prevention plan to modules and positions, strictly implement responsibilities, and decompose tasks layer by layer. Purchase sufficient de-icing equipment and supplies, and arrange 24-hour on-duty personnel to ensure that major roads are open to traffic. More importantly, traffic signs must be properly planned and laid out. Depending on the snow thickness and icing conditions on the road, traffic cones and warning signs will be placed on both sides of the road to warn drivers to slow down and drive slowly. Sprinkle sufficient amounts of ice-melting chemicals on bridges, ramps, intersections, and other slippery areas, and use signs on the roads to warn of possible dangers. For intersections with heavy traffic pressure, artificial traffic guidance should be reasonably set up. In addition, snow prevention measures for motor vehicles and public transportation should be strengthened. Issue reminders to urge drivers to change ice and snow tires and not to travel unnecessarily during a snowstorm. Increase bus and subway transport capacity, pay close attention to passenger flow peaks, and make dynamic allocations to avoid congestion and rescue difficulties. Empty buses on standby at the site must promptly rescue trapped buses or vehicles. Strengthen snow removal, ice removal, and maintenance in the station area. In addition, snow prevention measures for motor vehicles and public transportation should be strengthened. Issue reminders to urge drivers to change ice and snow tires and not to travel unnecessarily during a snowstorm. Increase bus and subway transport capacity, pay close attention to passenger flow peaks and make dynamic allocations to avoid congestion and rescue difficulties. Empty buses on standby at the site must promptly rescue trapped buses or vehicles. Strengthen snow removal, ice removal, and maintenance in the station area. In blizzard weather, the more deadly threat is the damage and impact on municipal infrastructure. First of all, the power system is easily affected by snowstorms. Transmission lines freeze, and ice on towers increases the power load, causing lines to trip or towers to collapse, causing widespread power outages. Secondly, communication infrastructure is also easily damaged during heavy snowfall. Mobile base station antennas collapse due to snow, Fixed and mobile communication signals were severely attenuated by the snowstorm. These can cause communication interruptions. At the same time, Blizzard's water supply and drainage facilities were greatly affected by freezing. Water pipes froze and cracked, snow collapsed sewer manholes, sewage treatment plants operated abnormally. These will affect the city's water supply and use. In addition, urban buildings will also suffer damage during heavy snowfall. 
Strong winds will blow off temporary facilities and insulation layers of buildings. Snow accumulation will increase the top load and crush the roof of the building. When encountering heavy snowfall, the Infrastructure Management Department is responsible for ensuring the basic operation of urban power supply, water supply, gas supply, communications, etc., and should take timely response measures. The first is to strengthen infrastructure operation monitoring. Establish a leading group to monitor and handle the operation of various infrastructures. Focus on monitoring the power system supply pressure, water and gas supply pipe network flow changes, communication base station connectivity, and related equipment operating parameters. Evaluate the impact of extreme weather on basic operations and identify weak links. Secondly, check the facilities and equipment to prevent failures. Develop equipment snow protection, warmth and de-icing plans, anti-freeze and dehumidify power transmission and transformation lines, communication towers, base stations, etc. to increase underlying heat and ensure normal operation of equipment. Strengthen wind and snow prevention measures for overhead lines, poles and towers to minimize the impact of heavy snowfall. Develop a plan for enabling backup equipment so that it can be quickly switched if a fault occurs. What cannot be ignored is that priority must be given to ensuring the energy use of important facilities. If a large-scale power outage occurs, power supply must be restored in priority order to ensure that government agencies, hospitals, water supply plants, airports, base stations, and other units have priority in power supply. Deploy temporary power supply measures such as mobile power supplies and power generation vehicles to make up for short-term energy shortages. Deploy and adjust the peak supply of gas to ensure residents heating. Thank you for liking, leaving a message, subscribing and turning on the little bell. We will update the latest news from around the world every day. Continue to use a scientific perspective to explore the complex truth behind meteorological events.